So very last thing that I would like to do it would be Okay. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Andre, actually, yes. can I can I ask a question to the yes. um, last lectures? So we, yes, were, we were speaking about equivariant cohomology and um, this yes. equivariant integration, and we had this equivariant parameter you called phi. And one question was that we had to invert it at some point, right? So we had something like equivariant um, volume of the plane was two pi over phi or something like that. And yes. um, this was because we were integrating one. So my question is kind of why, for example, if we have a two form, a given two form, which is closed and invariant, and we do this equivariant extension of it, why do we not have like the equivariant parameter in front of the function we add. And so, so in this... we, we, we actually have it. We actually have it in front of the function uh, after we make a covariant extension. Okay, so it is true that we always need to kind so, of... Let us, so let me answer your question, not with words, but with formula. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for asking questions because, because it is always important. So we had, we studied the following closed form that we wanted to integrate. Okay? Mm -hmm. Do you see what's written? At the moment, it's okay. now, now it's back to focus, yes. Ah, camera is not focused. Now, now it's okay. okay. Now it's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this form is definitely closed, but this form is not equivalently closed mm -hmm. because this operator acting on omega is definitely R dr that is not zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so, so it was an example. I can uh, even consider better example. F of R dr d5. Will give us F of R dr. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then <coughs> we then what we can do is that we can uh, construct an equivariantly closed form. I remember, I remind the differential equivariant is d plus phi i, in our case, i d or d phi. Mm -hmm. So equivariantly closed form should satisfy. Condition that that omega that is equivalently closed should correspond from two terms, omega two plus omega zero. So this is a function. This is a two form. 
-hmm. Now, in our particular case, d omega zero plus phi i d over d phi of omega two should be equal to zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have to solve this equation. I call it equation one. Yes, so my question actually arises here already. So why do we not put the equivariant parameter already here in front of omega zero so that like the total degree of omega equivariant is two? Ah, of course. So it is, uh, so, so it is, so when we solve it, of course we will get that that omega equivariant is, uh, of course, would be this plus, if you wish, phi omega zero tilde. Mm -hmm. So you propose this. So we have this. Mm -hmm. In this case, you see that the total, that the total, you may call it ghost number, or degree of omega equivariant is two. Two comes here from uh, R and phi, and two comes here from phi. Mm -hmm. So, so this was your question. Yes, because now, I mean, here we would then, if we would now kind of calculate the the integral, right, the equivariant integral of omega um, equivariant. Equivariant. Right, we would just get omega tilde of zero at the fixed points, like say exactly. at zero and at infinity. So, so if we compute equivariant integral of omega equivariant, it would of course be two pi over phi, phi mm -hmm. omega tilde at the fixed point. Mm -hmm. And after we cancel here, so so we'll this... get up to pi. This is cut off, Andrei. This is not visible. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's what I will get. Yes. So in this case, omega zero is a Hamiltonian. <clears throat> yes, and uh, but almost. It's not. Ah, yes. If you if and if you as Sam proposes, consider equation one. Mm -hmm. We may consider. So if, if what, if omega two is a symplectic form, mm -hmm. so Sen mentioned important particular case. D over D phi is a Hamiltonian and it is a Hamiltonian because we know that uh, omega two has to be invariant. So what we know, we know that if symplectic form is invariant, it uh, with respect to the action, then the vector field is Hamiltonian. So in this particular case, this equation is equation for to find the Hamiltonian for the vector field. But yes, in this case, it is Hamiltonian. Mm -hmm. But note that this equivariant extension could be done not only for the two form, it could be done in general. But in this particular case, it's, a, it's really a Hamiltonian. So, so what we have here is uh, this omega tilde at a point. So my question- So now, Donald. Yes, so-, uh, so I understand all this. This is very good. Thank you very much. But then my question is when we're talking about the equivariant volume, right? We were integrating one, basically. And we had the yes. problem that we said it's two pi over phi. And there was a problem to say, okay, what phi actually is and in which kind of space we're working because we kind of have to invert phi. But it seems here that actually there should not be this question because we should not integrate one, but we should kind of integrate the equivalent parameter somehow. Like oh, so, so no, not integrate the equivalent parameter. 
So if you talk about volumes, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. you may also ask what it would be if we actually consider volume measured by uh, omega 2. So we can take equivalent integral of one and we will get this. Mm -hmm. So if, if we consider, uh, say, the case uh, C, mm -hmm. complex plane, we can also do another thing. What, what else could we integrate? We could integrate some other form that is integrable. And mm -hmm. we will see what, uh, what could come out. In particular, you can consider so-called Disterman Ekman. Mm -hmm. Disterman Ekman. Okay. Disterman Ekman, yes, integral. It, it doesn't come to you. <laughs> okay, so, yes, you see. So you so you can compute the following thing. Omega 2 plus mm -hmm. phi omega naught. Mm -hmm. For general t, mm -hmm. okay, and here you will get the same result, but here the result would be e t phi omega naught at the fixed point. So the board is cut cut off. Already, uh, which cut off? Okay, I'll. Ah, I'll do it like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It seems that your camera is quite close to the board, it's closer than usual. Okay, I'll check it. I, I, I'll fix it. Mm -hmm. So you so you can also compute this. Mm -hmm. It would it would still be a localization. But now you have a parameter t here, and you can consider. Uh, so I'm I'm sorry. Here we have two pi over phi. Mm -hmm. So here you may consider t equal to zero. So it's an old case. You can consider first order in t. If you consider first order in t, the phi was cancelled. Mm -hmm. And you would see the and you would see the contribution of this omega zero at the point. Okay. So you can play with this formula in different way. Okay, I see. Thank you. So, so there, there are two things that I'd like to teach you today. One, one thing is the interesting uh, setup in physics. I say in physics. It will be the equivalent volume, not of the projective, not only totally equivalent volume, equivalent cohomology. It's more in, inter, interesting to study equivalent cohomology, not only of projective space, but also of the maps to projective space. So it will be one thing, because we will see that this equivariant, uh, that this uh, space is a product of projective spaces. So it's one thing. Another thing, I'd like you, uh, I'd like you to understand uh, why the formula for a covariant volume is, uh, it is as it is was written. Namely, last time we ended up
Maybe I'll start with this first. We ended up last time with the following formula that I wanted you to, to compute. Uh, Andrei, could you check the position of your camera? It's, it's sort of, we are looking at some piece of a black of, of your whiteboard now. Uh, okay, okay, thank you. I will recheck it. I will do it like this. Uh, no, I will do it like this. It seems that usually the camera is further away, I think. No? You see, I, you see, I, I moved something. So, so I, I got this. I don't want to get this. I want it per, so one second. I want it perpendicular. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an issue of orientation. Uh, ah. mm -hmm. The boundary, the boundary. I got the boundary. Oh, one of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I actually want want us to understand the following formula that we that uh, that I tried to show last time, and this formula was that if we have CP one and uh, we had. Uh, a vector, we had a C star action on CP1. And uh, at least I claimed that the answer was this. Okay. So it was for CP1. And I wanted you to see that here I see actually contribution from two points, the North Pole and the South Pole. So here I call this P of sigma. So you may check that it's the correct formula. Okay, I, uh, I I messed with so up to two pi, so I, I messed with a uh, factor of two last time. So here I actually have contribution from two points. The question, the question would be how it happens. And another interesting question is, look. Look at this formula. First of all, for phi equals zero, we know this formula, okay? So, sorry, how is this related to the, how, how the two residues are related to the North and South Pole? We have uh, two points. You may ask how residues are related to this. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, so let us study this formula from two possible points of view. <clears throat> So 
So what? So what should we study here? Mm. In the formula, so it's clear that when we compute covariant volumes, we have two fixed points, right? Because of what? So, so let me let me recall. Let me recall how do I get it. So I have CP1 that I understand the C square minus zero over C star. Okay. Then I have also an action of C star on over CP1. So let me write both actions in uh, homogeneous coordinates. The first action is lambda Z0 Z1. The second action So the, the, the second action I can take as follows. Z0 is not changing. Z1 is going to lambda equivariant Z1. Okay? So this I call C star factorization, and this I call C star equivariant. Okay? All together, and I see that C star equivariant has two fixed points. Z not equal to okay. First point is Z one equal to zero, so it's more it's it's a convenient fixed point. We call it zero because we used to treat. A non homogeneous coordinate Z. It's a ratio. So that's why this we call zero. And the second is Z naught equals to zero. Clearly, if Z naught equals to zero, then equivalent action coincides with factorization action. So this we call z equals to zero. And you know how we call this? This we call z equals to infinity. Mm -hmm. OK? So that's, so that's how we have two points. Now. Now, uh, now we need to compute contributions from these points, right? So, so my claim, so the claim I'm going to the claim that I'm going to make is that here we see these two points. Mm -hmm. Maybe Maybe you would like, so I'm thinking how to, how to explain that these are contributions from, from these two points in the better way. So, 
So you 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 know you know what I am planning to do. Let me let me think for a second. So first thing is that if this polynomial is a constant, we get zero. If this polynomial here is a Fubini Studi form. we get two contributions, okay? So when I say integral, I say integral around infinity. I'm thinking, you know, I am not ready to tell you now the easiest way to show exactly that these are contributions uh, from these two points while it's always clear that, that they are these contributions. Um, let, me po let me postpone this question, okay? Mm -hmm. the, only thing I, the only thing I want you to see is that this formula works, okay? Okay, so, so let us do it this way. Let us check that this formula works, okay? No, it, it, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, I, I guess it's just, uh, this formula is a little bit obscure in the sense that uh, special values of sigma on the nose don't have anything with special values of z. Yes, of course. But now let me tell you, so let me still discuss this formula from the following point of view. If you look at this formula, you may see interesting phenomena. And interesting phenomena is that here, that one over sigma and one over sigma plus phi is something that we already know. One over sigma is the equivalent integral of one of this c squared and one of a sigma plus phi is an equivalent integral of another c. So actually what we have in this formula is the equivalent integral of c squared, this one. And factorization by C star actually means this integral over the sigma. So Sorry, I didn't understand this. Yes, yes, you see, you see, it is a kind of non, it is kind of very non-trivial statement. Okay, what I'm, what I'm going to tell you. I will explain in the following, the following, I will explain in the following, sorry, the following view of this formula. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, I see. Mm -hmm. No, 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 maybe, maybe you see, but so. No, at least, at least I see what you're saying, no, I'm. <laughs> so it's a variant volume of uh, first C that I call one, it's what the power, mm -hmm. is one over sigma, where sigma is the factorization. A covariant volume of the second copy of C is one over sigma plus phi. So what we see is this formula. We see here a covariant volume of C square that is one over sigma, sigma plus phi. And then the formula says that 
we would like to integrate over sigma to get equivar uh, to get equivalent uh, formula for CP1. So the C1 and C2 they come with two different U1 uh, sister actions and and of they're course. not. Of course, this is this is action of uh, standard star factorization. And this is the product of those. And this is action of C star factorization together with the C star equivariant. Right, right, okay. So C star equivariant doesn't act here. Yeah. It acts here. So <clears throat> the strategy to get this formula would be the following. We would like to do the following. Uh, we would like to postpone taking this factorization. We would like to study equivariant cohomology here and integrate at the very end. And idea, and we should see that the, the taking factorization over C star actually means taking integral over equivariant parameter. And then we will get this nice formula. So it has this formula has a meaning and uh, many generalizations. So let us derive this formula first. And let us, uh, to avoid the complication, try to derive it in exactly this particular setting. So there are two so equivalent parameters. So there are two equivalent parameters, sigma and phi, and then you are getting rid of one of them. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the strategy would be to write down equivalent. Uh, the, the strategy would be to write down integral representation. Uh, for uh, for uh, computation of uh, integral over this equivariant product, mm -hmm. equivariant CP1. Then, doing some tricks, I will tell you, integrate out C squared first. And uh, let us predict what will happen. When we will integrate C out, we will get equivariant, equivariant volume. Mm -hmm. And then take uh, the second equivariant integration. Mm -hmm. So this would be a strategy to get this formula. Okay. Mm -hmm. So 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 let us do it step by step in this uh, simpler setting. Okay. And of course, our trick would be the localization. Okay. So we already, so I'll, I will use these notations, okay? This setting.
So, first of all, we need to explain how to how to write down integral over CP1 first. Okay. So to write down integral over CP1, we need to understand that CP1 is of course c squared, where we impose equation this one. And this is called moment map. And we and then we factorize by u1. So to impose this equation, we of course uh, need as always delta function that I am teaching all the time. So we will need uh, real real variable that I'll call lambda. Uh, I had lambda. Okay, I, I'll call it L because of Lagrange. And uh, I hope there'll be no mixture between lambda that are weights and lambda that are fermions. That is even. And also variable lambda that is odd. Okay. So I can just write down the delta function in the following way. So this is a moment map. I'll call it M. Okay. Here I put I, I lambda, and here I put dm. Okay. And I can also make the if I need the smearing of the delta function. Okay. So I so I do this. So in this way, in this way I am writing down the delta function. Now I need to ask a question. Is this delta function equivalently closed? Mm. So, so this delta function, this object, is of course E. And here I put dl plus d, and here I put lambda m minus epsilon lambda l. But that's why I know that this object is over dl is, of course, L d over d lambda. So that's that's how I see that this object is d closed. It's d l plus d closed, and I integrate here. So how so how can I treat it? 
So I may ask, is, is this object closed uh, equivariantly? Okay. So what would we think? Is it closed equivariantly or not? Well, probably not. You need to add some bits to it to make it closed equivalently. Yes. So what should I add? And when and where do I see that it is not equivalently closed? Well, so far somehow you one didn't didn't enter in the construction in any way. Uh, you, should, you should I don't know do for Dave Popov also. No. By the way, so by the way, by the way, let us discuss. So in this particular case, we may discuss: is it closed or not closed? Because look. This thing, so I will I will define z naught square. It is r naught square, the, and this, this is where we cannot square. see. We cannot we cannot see what you are writing. Sorry. So z naught square is r naught square. Z one square is r one square. So d m that enters here is uh, is, is uh, uh, horizontal. So maybe here you would agree that it is equivalently closed. I mean this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is because uh, the moment map is invariant, of course. Yes. So IV applied to DM is, of course, uh, LV of M. Okay. It is, of course, yeah. zero. Yes in general and that's what we see in formulas so so far so good mm -hmm. now so we make this moment map now we would like to divide by u1 okay and it is here that we may have some peculiarities, okay? So, and they, did, did you require time policing today? Yes, of course, as always, but uh, but I delayed the, the beginning. Yes, uh, and uh, what what is the uh, anyway? So what what is the interval for time, time policing? I, I'm not sure. So uh, so, so so how long? So you are speaking for about fifty minutes now, maybe. Fifteen. Fifty. Fifty. Fifty already. Yes. So I'm going to slow. Speaking about fifty, so I'll speak for for ten more minutes and then there'll be a break, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we factorize with respect to U1? So let me use so-called, so there are two ways to explain this. One way is a mathematical and another way is a physical way. Mm -hmm. And I'm just hesitating, not knowing what to start with. Okay, let me start with a mathematical way. Okay? Mm -hmm. So suppose there is a manifold X and we would like to understand 
this integral in terms of integral over x. So it's exactly our case. So mathematical way. And please remind me to tell you the physical way to understand this. Physical way would be called uh, gauging the fermionic uh, symmetry. So, so what? So what do I want to get? So here I have projection. And I call it the base. I would like to compute the product of the differential forms pull back from the base. But if I integrate this over x, I will get, of course, zero. Just because. For example, the degree of this form is uh, higher than degree of x, is lower than degree of x, because they are uh, horizontal. I cannot integrate. So in order to integrate, I need to understand how to integrate along the fiber. And in this way, I use the, the differential form, in this case to be one form, that I call A. This form would help me to integrate along the fiber. If I V, so V is the, X, is the action of this U1, on A equals one, then it's exactly what I want. So now what good. happens if IV applied to A is not one, is something. By the way, so what? So what kind of condition on A I would like to impose? Of course, I would like to impose the condition on A that it should be invariant. Everything has to be invariant. Well, it, it looks like a connection. Yes, it is a connection. Exactly, it is a connection form. If it is a canonically normalized connection form, mm -hmm. it's just what I need. But for some reason, I may, I, I, I would like to work with LV of A equal to zero and IV of A non-degenerate. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, in this particular case, I would like to say that I would like to normalize. Okay, let me call it A tilde. And A tilde is unnormalized connection. You may ask, why should we even bother with this unnormalized connection stuff? Hmm? Why not to use normalized connection and forget about it? And one of the reasons is that uh, I need to put this normalization condition somewhere. Because I would like to have uh, exponential understanding of what is going on. So philosophy that I'm saying is 
the structure that we are writing should be exponential of something that is exact under differential. And all conditions should be there. That's why it would work in many cases. It would work in quantum field theory. It would be uniform. And also, I would be able to make manipulations, you see? Not only, you see, you may, you may ask, what I'm doing, I'm fighting for a normalized connection. I will need it in further manipulation, you see? So, I need the condition of normalization. And I'll do it in the following way. Let me write you down the formula. So here is this IVA. And I would like to integrate it over some fermion. And uh, I need to call this fermion somehow. I'll call this fermion rho. And also, I'd like to integrate over two bosons, phi and phi bar. To pick up the proper normalization. Traditionally, this boson is called phi bar. Uh, I hope I never used rho. Okay. Some people call it eta bar. Okay, I'm sorry, I'll call it eta bar. You see, there are many conventions. So, you may ask, what I'm doing in such simple problem of writing down connection, I am introducing three more fields, okay? So eta bar is a boson and phi phi bar e, 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 e. Eta bar by the fermion, of course. Eta bar. Uh, okay. This one. Yes. This one uh, mm -hmm. is a fermion. No, I don't understand. Is the formula correct? Is the should be the IV there or just A? No, I don't understand. Ah, A. Okay. Thank you, Pasha. Not mm -hmm. only for time policing, but for, you see, so A is a one form. That's why it's fermionic. This is also fermionic. Mm -hmm. So A is A mu psi mu. Fermion. So all, all, only fields are fermions, phi and phi bar are also fermions? No, of course there are bosons. Because mm -hmm. I need to divide over. Yes. Um... I need to divide over uh, what? I need to divide over IV of A. So actually, would I take this integral, I will get this. Mm -hmm. 
Są zlicy za Malajska też. And then for future generalization. So this is for the for, for, for odd for odd d one, uh, for yeah for odd the algebra. That that would I consider multi-dimensional case? This phi should go together with this vector field V if there are several components. While this phi bar. So, and these, we'll so, so this together. Phi's are as uh, super ghosts. Ah, Pasha. Okay, you spoiled the presentation. You knew it. No, I'm trying to unwind. Yes, yeah. yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. But I was trying to explain it for mathematicians. So, up to now, mathematicians would be able to see that there is this type of presentation. That's a multi-dimensional case. Would it be not only one U1, but many U1s? Mm -hmm. K. So K, K, K U1s. There will be an index. A. That goes from one, etc., to k. And here I will have this vector field. And I will need to create not a one form, but a k form. And the idea how to create a k form is to get this k form using some universal thing. Pick up a one form, several one forms, multiply it with eta bar, and then integrate. So is it intentional that somewhere it's A and somewhere it's alpha? It should be A everywhere. Intentionally. It's, it's intentionally, because the, they mean different things. Uh -huh. This yeah, formula yeah. makes sense because there is an operation EVA A tilde alpha. And here we have the so called normalization matrix N A alpha. I hope that this looks like A, not but like alpha. The same amount of alphas as, as U1s, right? And also you see, the same when you say the same amount of, of, yes. So we want this rank of n to be maximum. Yes, okay. Let me tell you that in quantum field theory, this would be interesting operator, etc. But now we are doing finite dimensional case. Mm -hmm. Now, great. We understand these bosons as, and, and, and you see what stands here. Maybe here is a minus sign. Phi A, N A alpha, phi bar alpha. So when we take integrals of a phi and phi bar here, we get the determinant of M. It is just this normalization that we were looking for. Mm -hmm. Actually, let me make a command for mathematicians. When mathematicians uh, in differential geometry try to understand what connection is, of course they consider unnormalized connection. Okay, remark, remark for mathematicians, okay? 
Okay, I'll raise this, I'll restore it. A tilde is a connection because connection is an equation for horizontal uh, for uh, tangent vectors, but that, that I call u. So this is a set of equation for uh, parallel transport. You need, of course, a tilde, and you can easily multiply this a tilde by any number. Okay, it is the same. This is a connection. However, there is another thing. A is a connection form if it is a tilde normalized like this. Because different differential forms lead you to connection. And there is a question how to normalize it, how to pick a standard one. And we are, and we give a definition of a connection form. It's a connection with this normalization condition, or uh, a bit more complicated than the Lie algebra case. So here I'd like to mention the difference between connection and connection is the set of of invariant horizontal uh, planes in the tangent space. To get this space, you do not need this a tilde to be normalized. Okay, but there is also a condition of normalization that you may put for convenience. So here, for mathematicians. It's a subtlety between the connection and connection form, okay? Unfortunately, this subtlety is not uh, explained uh, in the literature on differential geometry. People say, look, connection is something that IV of A tilde is one. It's written in the textbooks. I'd like to separate, okay? Pasha, was it clear? Um, sure, sure, no, that, that's clear. Okay, so after I'm making this remark on normalization, now I have the possibility, now when I have this, that's how I put down connection and that's how I put down normalization, I would like to rearrange it in another way, okay? I would like to treat this and this as pieces of what? Of a covariant differential. Look, and this is already a piece of a covariant differential. So this is phi IV acting on, on what? On this thing. Now, how can I understand this guy? I can understand, sorry, with the bar. I can understand it as at a bar alpha, D over D phi bar alpha acting on the same guy. So these two pieces together should be understood and may be understood as follows. Let me write down the differential. That I'll say very total differential. Psi mu d o d x mu plus 
Plus my favorite L. Diego de Landa. Plus. What else do I have? What else do I need? Plus equivariant piece. Plus eta bar d over d phi bar. And then I see that the full uh, exponential is d total of something. Hmm? Okay. So physicists are calling these multiplets. So whenever you have factorization with respect to some group, you have this multiplet. Maybe it will be proper to call it Fadeev, Popov multiplet, but I actually don't remember who introduced it first. So what, what, what is multiplet here? At least uh, Nikrasov, Shatafili, Moore call it uh, eta phi, eta bar phi bar multiplet. So I know that Gregory Moore looks through the literature. It is his habit to look through the literature. So, and if he didn't found it before physical literature, it means that maybe it was introduced first in physics. Now, as Pasha knows, as Pasha knows. I explain this on the mathematical level, okay? No physics up to now. Only Pasha wanted me to say that it's physics. Of course it's physics. And physics is, here is, is here. So of course phi, phi bar, eta bar is a gauge fixing of the odd part of the super group with the generator like this. So, so, so before the physics, so, so this d total, so uh, so there are two parts there that are the usual equivalent differential, and then there are two other so, parts. And, and let us and let us see what stands here. Here, what stands is lambda m plus epsilon lambda l plus a bar. At bar. So all terms that I wrote down in the exponential are exact with respect to this total differential. Maybe a twiddle phi bar alpha, wasn't it? 
Let us see. Let us see. Ethyl delphibar alpha. Ah, yes. Of course, fibar alpha. Mm -hmm. So everything what happens here is a homotopy. Mm -hmm. And here we have, we already see our good old friend, equivalent differential. And a bunch of other stuff. Yes, but, but this bunch is not that, is not that terrible. Mm -hmm. So actually, what is written here, as I told you, is the gating of the odd part of the supergroup. Mm -hmm. So last time when I explained to you a covariant differential, I told that phi has a meaning as a Chevalier parameter for the super algebra. It happens to be even. That's why it stands here. So can I ask you a silly question? Sure. So, so I thought we were considering a U1 action only. So I expect only phi, not phi bar appears. So I feel that we somehow extend those U1 action to C star action, I mean, moving So uh, you see, uh, so wait a moment, you see, I call this phi bar for, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why I call this phi bar. I call this phi bar because of the because of the tradition in the physical literature. It's because this structure appears in N equals two super young mills, where there are phi and phi bar scalars. So actually meaning of phi and phi bar is different. Phi takes values in the Lie algebra. Phi bar takes values in the very different space. Very different. I intentionally called it by alpha. It is something. So they are very, very different. OK, thank you. And uh, that's why I, I made all this stuff about normalization, etc. So from the point of view of gauge fixing, phi is a ghost. Phi bar is anti-ghost or uh, b-ghost in terms of phi gave Popov. Maybe it's better to call it B ghost because, sorry, anti ghost and BV, sorry. So phi is a ghost like C ghosts. And this is like B, okay. Like C ghost. And this is like B ghost. And eta bar is like Lagrange multiplier. So these fields are, are very well known in uh, gauge fixing. However, what we are gauge fixing now, we are gauge fixing an uh, odd group whose Lie generator is contraction with a vector field. That's why these things are very natural for physicists. So let us see what, uh, how to understand it. We have Lagrange multiplier and what we have here. Q 
here, what we have here is actually what we call the gauge fixing. You may say, come on, we need to put gauge fixing to zero, right? Right, that's what you say. In bosonic theory, in ordinary theory, we, we take gauge fixing function and we put it to zero. However, this integral over eta puts it down. And note that uh, in the uh, Grassmannian world, the odd function equals to the delta function of itself. So this integral over eta makes you delta function here. You do not need, you, you even do not have, and you do not can do this smearing of delta function in the odd world. That's how, uh, that's why this is the gauge fixing. And this is Fadeev Popov ghost trick. Because gauge fixing, uh, you take anything that could be that could be fixed, okay? And you need to normalize it properly. That's what these term, terms are doing. Yeah. So this is from the point of view of gauge theory. From the point of view of uh, taking uh, coset space, you arrange the measure on fibers, taking this eta integral. And here you normalize this measure properly. So that's why, and that's how I explain this formula. I try to explain this formula, both in the language of physics and in the language of the semantics. Now about notations. People met this thing first time in the year, at least physicists met this, in the year 1986, I think, or 87. When uh, Edward Wheaton studied N equals two super young mills, twisted. And there, there was this uh, letters phi and phi bar. That's why he called these bosonic ghosts uh, with these letters. And since then, uh, he, he was keeping going and going with this. Maybe Atya used it earlier, but I don't remember uh, what was the Atya's, defini Atya's definition, but, but, the, but, the, but, but this is what is going on. Okay? Okay, so now, Pasha. Yes. Now it's time to make a break, but this break would be 10 minutes long, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now we will have 10 minutes break. Mm Well, and Andre, uh, I'll have to decouple uh, my my six uh, a.m. sharp because I, I need to get some sleep before I teach. Yes, yes. So, how long do we have before before this? It, well, it means that I, in in an hour and fifteen minutes, I'll have to. Decouple. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. You see, decoupling is to be a good policeman. Good policeman who decouples is a policeman who dies 
you're doing his duty, okay? Yes, yes, exactly. The best policeman. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, indeed. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Паша, сколько у меня еще времени? Вот. Наверное, минут пять. Еще осталось. Видите? Да. Кажется, да. Угу. Все, спасибо. Угу. Наверное, пора к нашим баранам. Да, есть. Yes. Угу.
Ok. So, so I'll continue. So what I'm going to do right now, I will let you to guess the correct trick. Okay, Pasha? Because uh, if somebody will tell you the trick, you will say, oh, it's a trick. You will never remember it. However, if you will guess the trick, you will remember it forever. Right? A trick for what? For what? Ah. Now I want I, now I want you to make the following trick, okay? Mm. What I explain is the following: is that the full integral that we have here is the integral over x's psi. L lambda. What else? Phi bar, eta bar, and phi of exponential. So at the moment, I will forget about this P star. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, I'll, I'll, I'll keep them. And here we'll have exponential of D total applied to something. Okay? So that's what we have right now. Mm -hmm. However, we would like to understand the mysterious formulas that I wrote from the very beginning. You know that they work, and uh, but you don't know how to understand them. What is their meaning? Which, which formulas for, for the equivalent um, integral? Yes, for the, so the, for, for, the equivalent, for the equivalent integral. Mm -hmm. So we always need to remember what we are doing. It helps. Mm -hmm. Our goal was to understand the following formula. It's not visible what you're writing now. It's it's cut off. I see. Maybe you can maybe you can turn the camera a little bit. I don't want to change the camera setting. You see, it's so. Our goal was to understand this formula. Okay. That's what we have at the moment. So, at the moment, we do not know how to treat all differential forms, like P star from the base. But we know how to treat some of them. Okay? We know that pi star of uh, Fubini study type form is equivalent in a covariant cohomology to, to phi. Right? Mm -hmm. So, we will not write the universal formula. We will write the formula. You see, it was a general thing. For pi star of omega, 
that are equivalent to polynomials of phi. Okay? And this is not the universal integral. Not all differential forms have this form, are, are like this, but some are. Okay? But, uh, you may call them descendants of one. No, wait, wait a second. So all, all, all closed ones are, right? On, you see, on, uh, so here, so on, CPU, on CPM, it's true. Yes. On CP2, on CP1, it's true. But mm -hmm. you see, I'm trying to treat uh, CP1 uh, in the way that could be generalized to arbitrary case. Mm -hmm. So it happens that uh, all cohomology on CP1, cohomology on CP1, could be represented by polynomials of phi. It is true for some other spaces. But, but for but some spaces, it is not true. Formula to which we are going is a formula specific to CP1. You didn't try it for us formula for, I don't know, even an arbitrary rhetoric variety. But I want to explain it in a way that it will help you. Okay, okay. Pasha, I agree. So for mm -hmm. CP1, for CP1, these forms could be replaced by polynomials in phi. Mm -hmm. So for CP1, it's true. Okay. And you may think when it is true in general. So now, the strategy would be, so here we have star number one. I wrote it. The strategy would be to put here d dot star number two such that the integral still would make sense. Okay? And then you can forget about C star number one and study the thought of C star number two. So this is a strategy. I want you to find such star number two that we could get such formula. The role of phi is played by sigma. I'm sorry. So this is my methodological failure. I, I had to re, rename the fields. But oh, uh, oh, sorry, but I, I'm confused because there, there's also phi in that formula. To which yeah, so, so this phi was a covariant. Yes. And, uh, and, and this phi is the phi for u1 action. So this, so this, uh, so my convent, yeah. so my notations are not good. Ah, see, see, see. Okay, okay, okay. But mm -hmm. main idea is the following. No, so, so, be? Andre, actually, I'm confused because 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 that that phi appeared in what we claim to be the piece of equivalent differential, which looked like that old phi of of well, like equivalent parameter. There was phi a i v a on the right board. Yes. Yes, and but I, this was but yes. this was because of the u one group over which we take a closer. Yes, but so which phi is it? This one. Yeah. Is it the wrong one or the right one? Is it the equivalent one or, or the just this bosonic field or, or both simultaneously? This field. So in, in this presentation, this very general presentation, this phi was uh, the phi of the, of the group over which we take a coset. So it means that our CP, so at first, there is a U1 action when we represent the CP1 as a yes. uh, fear quotient by the group. Oh, I see. And there is another U1 action, which is another one acting on CP1 by rotation. Yes, but at the moment, at the moment, 
I am uh, I am not putting it in. Yes, yes. So the final the D total is the first one, right? The first one. So, so, so here we have this phi, and this is this diagonal action. Okay. Yes, yes, okay. You see, I put these indices for further generalization. So, so let us see. Okay, I see. So that's what we have. We have uh, integrals of x psi phi. So that's what we expect to get. We understand that integrals of our x and psi could, uh, could be equivalent volumes. That's we already studied. This integral over d phi is, of course, the integral uh, that we want to be at the very end knowing the formulas. Mm -hmm. the, thing, the thing that we still need to treat somehow is this. We have a bunch of fields here. Yes. A lambda, phi bar, and eta bar. So we need to find the trick that will throw them all away. Um, so the question is how to guess this star number two. That would throw this field away altogether. So it is a trick. So everything is on the board. Mm -hmm. I, I want you to find this star two. Not in general case, but in very particular case. So what are so let me write down the piece of different the piece of differential that contains these fields that we don't need knowing the correct answer. At a bar d over d phi bar plus L d over d lambda. So actually, I'm asking you to do very simple thing. Now, let me act not as a physicist, not, a, not even as a mathematical physicist, but as a mathematician. We see that in these two systems, eta bar, phi bar, and a lambda, there is no cohomology. Sure. So we may take them out by some kind of homotopy. So can, can I act on something like lambda phi bar or something? So, 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 let, so let us see. So let us do it by trial and error method. What if we put here lambda? Does it have correct parity even if I, okay, let's see. So if we put here lambda phi bar, yeah. we will get L phi bar. Yes. So it will take out uh, bosons, but still. There will be also the term e eta lambda, eta bar lambda. Great. Mm -hmm. So let us see what happens. Mm -hmm. If we apply it here. We will get eta bar 
Lambda plus L phi bar. Mm -hmm. And probably we need to have some eyes here. But when we have it, we are done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is a good exercise to see how to generalize it for other cases. But at the moment, it's exactly what we need, mm -hmm. right? Just do this. Does it help us to get the formula that we want with this with this denominator that we want? Of course. Mm -hmm. So first, so what we, we need to put here, and we want to get uh, this p, the correct p, the equivalent p from someplace. We want to put this term here with a very huge coefficient, mm -hmm. lambda capital. So this is very huge coefficient. Mm -hmm. So fields say that these fields become infinitely massive and could be integrated away. Let us check the number of these fields, OK? The number of fields lambda and L is the rank of the group, right? The number of fields, so it is, and the number of fields eta bar and phi bar is also the rank of the group. So, so, if, so in general case, there is the same number of lambdas and phi bars. And it is because they are related. So in some sense, lambda stands for the real part of the C star and phi bar stands for the imaginary part. So it's not stupid to, to, to consider this pairing, OK? Uh, so I didn't understand this point that you were making about the real and imaginary part. OK, just imagine, just imagine that you are studying not just a quotient by C star, mm -hmm. just imagine that you are studying the quotient by C star to the power L, mm -hmm. OK? Then you will have some number of these mm -hmm. and some number of this. Yes. This number would be equal. Yes. So it is so what? So what you have here, it is a kind of a pairing between of A's and alphas. The number is the number of these fields is the same. Yes. So it is not that stupid. to consider this combination, lambda phi, phi, phi bar, mm -hmm. that you, Pasha, proposed. But you mm -hmm. proposed it in one dimensional case. Yes. I want to say that it is good to do it not only in one dimensional case, but in mm -hmm. any case of C star to the n action. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, so, okay. so can, can, can we see this this formula arising with? I mean, we, we, we yeah we can see how, how this quadruple of fields go, goes away, but uh, from the integral, but there are there's a, the rest of the integral to be taken, and yes, we need so somehow, okay. some, somehow so, the so, correct okay. right. Okay, so so first so first, it is not stupid to say that in the case of C star to the K action. There is such a pairing. Mm -hmm. It's not that stupid. Okay. Mm -hmm. You see, my mathematical feeling mm -hmm. want to say that since these elephant lambdas and these eta bars and phi bars are not very different, mm -hmm. they all are related to the C star action. So basically, there is this type of pairing. At least the number is the same. And you may see that no, not only the number is the same. So this quadruple goes away, mm -hmm. okay? Yes. So when this quadruple goes away, we don't have this star at all. And quadruple goes away. So what we are left with, we are left with the integration over c to the power n. In our case, n equals to 2. <coughs> Is this one. And we know how to do it equivalently. Because we, because we have equivalent localization formulas. Wait a second. This is an ordinary integral. Uh, this is of not. Course. So what does it mean? Uh, I mean, it, this integral is equal to infinity. This integral is not o over x and psi? No, over phi. Let me see. And so you see, first we have this integral, and then yes. we have an integral over phi. Yes. So, so there's first, a bosonian. There's a non-saturated, but I mean, there's a constant. It doesn't depend on the bosonic variable, right? Okay, so, 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 so let us. But my proposal is to study it uh, term by term, okay? No, but uh, so th there's something that's written on the board, which is on the nose. It, it is infinity. Or may maybe zero times infinity. So. So, uh, so there is, okay, so, 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 so one second, one second, okay? Mm -hmm. So first of all, I'd like to convince you that uh, with a fixed phi, we can take this integral over x and psi. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. It's one thing. And then we will get for fixed phi equivariant mm -hmm. integration formula. Mm -hmm. So since I already represented these differential forms in terms of polynomials of phi, I think that there's I some can sort of easily integrate here. There's a constant confusion going on about the meaning of phi. Like, phi is it the one that is, is it the one above or is it not the one above? Now, no, yes, we can. Uh -huh. So, so actually, I, I, I had to. So, since so it's it's my mistake, but I, I picked notations that are 
known in the literature, okay? Right, 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 right. So people, however, in the explanation, I had to, I had to do it like this. No, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's all right. But I thought that when, when you decided to fix the value of phi, you sort of decided So when it's... I'm taking this integral, okay. first I fix the value of phi and take integral over x and psi. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, and then I take the phi integral. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when I fixed phi in this integral, I will get up to two pies. this thing. Because we already integrated C. So we can similarly integrate C square. So let us see the meaning of this phi square here. Each power of phi came from the covariant integral over the complex plane. Okay. That's why I have phi square in denominator. I also have these nice polynomials. Um, sorry, and, and the, I'm not sure what you're doing now. You're, which formula are you starting with? The formula upstairs or the formula downstairs? The formula downstairs. Mm -hmm. So this is in the cloud. Okay. Mm -hmm. I am going from downstairs here, taking the x psi integral. That we already studied. Mm -hmm. But everything is done equivalently. So after I excluded with your help, this lambda and phi bar and all this, I have left only with this system. Mm -hmm. But now I need to take this integral first in X and Psi. And later on, integrate over phi. Okay. And so sorry, I'm, I'm a bit lost with the logic here. So I, I mean, we, this is sort of a regularized integral where we're switching from the normal integral to the equivalent one. Before, with so, 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 uh, so, once, a, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. So, we had the normal integral. We, so I explain, I spent some time to tell mm -hmm. you what star one is. Mm -hmm. Now, you guessed 
the star two. And of course, we can put the star that was used last time. Okay, so that's Remember. the correct organization. Mm -hmm. Ah, so we should add that thing. Okay. So we wanted star one, then we add your term and this mm -hmm. term. Okay. So this is the paradigm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we eliminate this, replacing it by this. So I mean, uh, all the integrand uh, disappear except this uh, equivalent uh, parameter. Yes, all these four, this quartet disappears. Okay. Mm -hmm. We add this equivalent local localization term to compute the integral over x and psi. So you see now everything disappears. It is possible to take an integral over c to the power n if there is nothing in. So first I got rid of lambda l phi bar and eta bar using Pasha Yaw trick. And then using the trick from the previous lecture, Mm -hmm. I got rid of x psi integral. So everything but phi goes away. Mm -hmm. Everything goes away. Mm -hmm. So we are left with the phi integral. And in the phi integral, we integrate along the line. Sorry, why? Why we integrate along the line? Yes. Because do you remember the origin of the phi field? Phi field in this construction yes. was, was the bosonic ghost. Yes. So uh, it takes values of the line. Okay, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And now we know in all this business how to integrate, how to enter, how to put here external C star action. You see, all this lambda phi bar has nothing to do with this external C star. They just commute with it. Mm -hmm. So I can easily put here this external C star, right? That I'll do in the form. I need to pick up another letter, A capital. So this is, so this stands for phi i is for, for coset C stars. And sigma i would stand for external. Mm 
-hmm. So with this, I know how to integrate Psi X system. I am just taking a covariant volume. of C with respect to this equivariantization with both coset and, ex and external parameters. Mm -hmm. So that's why In this particular system, I put here phi and phi plus sigma. So this is the result of a covariant integral of C1, and this is the result of integral of C2, or I call it C0 and C1. Homogeneous coordinates. So I have these homogeneous coordinates here. And I have this equivariant integrals. So the total result is the following. Integral over d phi, p1 of phi, pn of phi, phi, phi plus sigma. <laughs> Remember that this phi appeared, as you know, as the Fadei of Popov ghost for the odd <coughs> for the odd symmetry. And of course, it's integrated along the line, along the real line. So here, I am almost there with the only problem. The contour? Exactly, Pasha. Mm -hmm. The integral over R is not defined. Mm -hmm. I have an actual pulse. And I need to know how I go around them. However, I know uh, what was the origin of this. It is because I overrun the, <coughs> the pretty well-defined integral when I had a moment map by, <coughs> by the tricky integral. like fast oscillating integral. It was L phi bar. So it was really a fast oscillating integral. Mm -hmm. So would I be more accurate, okay? I would know how to shift these 
So these integrals from the real line. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is determined by the moment map, as we know. So what should be included and what should not be included is determined by the moment map. That's what, that's what we studied from the very beginning when we studied the toric varieties. We said, so now I'll erase this. So I already have this formula, so I can erase it from here. We said, we started by saying that we are studying this thing. But this thing is not defined before we, <clears throat> before we put in the moment map, right? Mm -hmm. So instead, we went to this. So we put a moment map and then we take the quotient. So we see everything in integral representation. So you see some information about the moment map should be in. We met this also when we studied equivariant uh, localization. Remember that we said that the number of fixed points differs because we consider the cases CP1, C, and C star, okay? So this is exactly when we see this. This integral I need to put in the quotient marks Okay. So this is the correct formula, but I need to add which poles are in this contour. And this is consistent with localization. Because when I use your trick, Pasha, mm -hmm. this second star is much bigger than the small star. But the contribution from the small star is this I epsilon that stands here and tells you if I need to include them or not. Mm -hmm. So you may predict, or we may predict from the very beginning, <coughs> that the final integral would be a bit ill-defined to include the contribution from the moment map. And that's what we have. So we have this nice formula with this quote with these quotients that says how to put the put uh, the contour. Mm -hmm. So we should not get universal formula, 
because of these peculiarities, and we do not have. But we have almost universal formula. <coughs> we have a universal formula plus additional prescription, which polls should we include or not. Mm -hmm. And now <coughs> I want to say something even better here, okay? That in this way, I explained how to compute everything on, uh, on toric varieties, right? CPM was just particular case. So from here, you know how to compute things on toric varieties. But you should do better. I explained it to you yesterday, but maybe now you will understand better what I mean, what I meant yesterday in our say called private seminar. That Oh, this, is the of, this is C Sorry? CP1. This is a CP1 formula. This is not CPM, right? So, so this is CP1. So mm -hmm. now, now what could be CPM formula? Mm -hmm. D5, because we have only one star. Thank you, Fasha, for, for holding me on the button. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Right. And of course, polynomials on phi, polynomial and small on phi. So this is CPN equivalent. But I want more, okay? I am very ambitious and I would like to compute even more interesting uh, formulas. Uh, Andre, I have a sort of a question. Um, yes. So this form the formulas that you're writing is sort of a product of a bunch of cohomology classes and then pa somehow paired with a whatever canonical class. So it's a Fabinus well, fundamental type. Class. Fundamental class, fundamental class. Uh, so it's a Fabinus type operation, but here we are interpreting it as, well, the product is not deformed, but the integration is deformed. The product is deformed too. Is it? So sorry, so, so sorry. Let, let, let me see. Let me see. Of course, the product is deformed. Come on. Let us look at the formula. You okay. see, mm -hmm. you see that in the equivalent case. Mm -hmm you have the point-wise product over the fixed points. So after we have this integral formula, mm -hmm. you, can you can decompose it into, into Laurent monomials. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when yes, yes. you decompose it into Laurent mon monomials, you would see that First, you have a ring Well, this is a question already for CP1, right? Um, oh, no, it's, it's, it's CPM. Mm -hmm. 
But the, the question stands already for CP1. Yes. So are, are yes. we deforming the products? Product? Product, of course, product is deformed. The product mm -hmm. of a variant, uh, of course. Product is already deformed. Because, because you need, so when you are making a covariant continuation, you are adding some, you are adding something. Right. You need, you need, okay, Basha, thank you. So I'm, I'm sorry, it's so obvious for me that I, over, <laughs> that I am running over. Okay, this important moment. I'm trying to compare it with, with the quantum cohomology that you discussed just before. And it's also a good point. In this case, product is also deformed. Yes. Mm -hmm. But here, let us see why here the product is deformed. Product is deformed because you can take, suppose you, suppose you take the basic form. So D of this is zero and IV of this is zero, okay? Then, <clears throat> then there is a question, how do we get the product? Ah, Pasha, you confused me a bit, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the basic form mm -hmm. actually represents an element of a covariant cohomology, mm -hmm. okay? Okay. Then, how do we make a product? Mm -hmm. We multiply, right? Mm -hmm. Ah, so of course we get, so when we multiply, of course we get again an element of a covariant cohomology. Mm -hmm. However, we need to, to interpret the result of this product in terms of some basis. The question is, how do we know the basis? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, Pasha. So you, so you, so you confused me. Let me tell you when did you, when did you confuse me? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I need to think because you you put me to a puzzle. Okay. Mm -hmm. So your puzzle is like this: <clears throat> how to define the product in a covariant cohomology. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, here, the formulas that you are writing they look like sort of cyclic products, right? Okay. Okay, it is good to have puzzles. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and I found the following contradiction. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes. In this way, things would be more lively. Consider the Fubini study form. Mm -hmm. On CP1, where everything is a covariant. Ah. 
Yes, for Finnish two D is a covariantly closed. Yes. Mm -hmm. On CPU. Up. So it represents some class. Yes. Oh, uh, I don't know. I mean, you, you need to add something to it, right? You need to add a zero, zero form part. Yes. Yes. So, so right. So Fubini study form. Yes, you are right. So Fubini study form is, uh, is closed, but it is not equivalently closed. So I cannot say that I just multiply Fubini study forms. Mm -hmm. I have to say that Fubini study forms plus something sigma omega zero, that this is closed. Mm -hmm. And then this addition is proportional to sigma, as Donald said from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And moreover, this addition is not canonical. Because when I go from Fubini study here, I could add here sigma times uh, 17. It would also be a covariant continuation. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's one thing. Another thing. When I get Fubini study in this way, I would say that Fubini study is something that corresponds to phi. And here and in this case, I'll get the unique continuation of what Fubini study is equivalently. Here I'm making continuation. And here, there is a canonical representative. Mm -hmm. When I say that Fubini studio is represented by phi, in the second case, I easily see that in the string, phi square is equivalent to what? Negative sigma phi or something. Yes. So here I have kind of deformation of multiplication. Mm -hmm. However, if I use the past one, I don't know what is the canonical way to continue for BD study? I could always add sigma times one here. But in any case, the ring is like this. So it's a, a continuity property of a residue. Yes. So it would be good and interesting to play here. I don't want to push you too much. So you can uh, see what's going on. I just I just only want to make one more remark. Pasha. Yes, yes. Should I put one more idea right now or I should quit uh, for today? No, that's good. Well, I'll have to decouple in about five minutes. Okay. So one idea for Pasha's five minutes, okay? 
but one idea in five minutes okay mm-hmm. and you don't be there the idea is so all this all this was about uh, projective spaces authority variety now imagine that I want to have <coughs> Hypersurfaces mm-hmm. in toric varieties. Mm-hmm. What was this mean? I have equation F capital of X equals to zero such that C star of f of x, c star action, let me say one c star, is some lambda to some power p. Mm -hmm. So homogeneous, Mm -hmm. homogeneous functions like And I want to get the integral representation for this. And it turns out that I can do it. Namely, I can add here the complex line <coughs> shifted by one. I call it fermions. And I can deform. So let me call here coordinate pi and I can deform the differential to be like this and this is called casual differential And I, will, I can write down integral formulas where everything is localizing on zeros of f. And then I take a quotient with respect to C star. Mm-hmm. And I want to run the full program. And you know what? Everything works similarly. The only thing would be that equivariant weights of equation would come in numerator. So I would get formulas like this. So this is for variables, and here I will get formulas for equations. And formulas were for equations for this particular case would be So I will get these numerators coming from equations because they are odd. And I will show you examples of this when? Tomorrow. Okay. So what I will explain letters? the numerators. What are those letters there? What is mu? Mu. Mu would be a weight of equation with respect to external equivariant parameters. Uh If we just ignore this, we will have this. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That sounds great.
So please, uh, please wait with this knowledge until tomorrow. Sounds okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, this is. So I hope that I somehow explain this mysterious and remarkable formula. Uh, no, well, that's, that's, that sounds awesome. Well, so far, so okay. far, you, I think I think you explained the case without the Kazul part. Yes, without the Kazul part. Yes. But mm -hmm. I will, I, I, I'm going to add the ingredients one after another, mm -hmm. step by step. Mm -hmm. It, it will be possible also to extend it to an abelian case. You will see. Mm -hmm. But step by step, OK? Sounds great. And at the end, you'll be able to understand the Nikrasov formulas. Or you will explain the Girental thing? I will explain both Girental and Nikrasov step by step. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. OK? All right, thank you. So thank you. Pasha, thank you for holding me on the bottom and for your uh, being policeman. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. okay, so see you tomorrow.